All right, so I have here the Sony A65 with 35.18 lens on it and the Canon T4i with the 40 lens. And I spent the past week comparing these two cameras, walking around shooting with both of them. I am gonna talk a little a bit about the comparison, but really I mostly want this to be my thoughts on the Sony A65. And I'm gonna start this by talking about the Canon for a minute. So when this T4i came out, the big new feature that the marketing Canon gurus are all over is the continuous autofocus during video. It's a step forward. Um, but the truth is that both Nikon and Sony have had this in their cameras now for over a year. And the Sony is on its second generation and actually uh, approaches this completely differently. Whereas Canon and Nikon have a mirror in there that flips up out of the way, then you are using the sensor itself to do kind of contrast detection, focus, and they baked in some phase uh, pixels that have phase detection focus in there. Um, I don't want to get too much into the details. They got a mirror that flips up. Sony has a mirror that's translucent, lets some light through to the sensor, bounces some light up to the big focusing brain, and the result is really nice uh, continuous autofocus during video. There are some drawbacks too, but before we get to those, let's look at what else you get with the Sony. So, you know, what is in this camera? We have a 24 megapixel sensor. It's a good sensor. I was really pleased with the, uh, for the most part, really pleased with the quality and detail out of the images I was getting out of here. You have the LCD screen and you have a digital viewfinder. There's a little teeny screen in here, super high resolution, over 2 million pixels, uh, but it is digital as well. 1080p video, of course, with stereo sound. Steady shot is built into the body of the camera, so any lens you have is automatically stabilized and has two different versions of steady, stop, steady shot or image stabilization, one for stills and one for video, and they both kind of just work seamlessly. Shoots 10 frames per second. Because it doesn't have this mirror that needs to flip up out of the way, it can do um, really nice fast burst rates. GPS, in-camera HDR, in-camera best frame selection for noise reduction, and a couple more features that I'm gonna mention in, the, in a minute. But let's get into it. For the most part, I really enjoyed using this camera. It's got a nice, solid feature set. Feels pretty good in the hands. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about this little indent here for the grip, um, but, but I like it. It's comfortable. They don't make a battery grip, so you can't make it any bigger. Maybe they will at some point in the future. We don't know. Um, the Canon, of course, there's several different battery grips you can throw on there. The T3i one actually fits just fine. And then you have a bigger camera, a little bit easier to hold if you have bigger hands. But in general, really point and shoot like ease of use because you can use either of the viewfinders or the LCD. Uh, it's something you should seriously consider. Focus during live view is excellent. And it actually doesn't matter if you're looking through the viewfinder or on the LCD screen. The focus method is it, it's using is the same for both of those because of that translucent mirror in there. And in good light, it is fast. Just as fast as the phase detection, that, which is through the viewfinder on the Canon. But as that light begins to drop some, it does have a little bit more trouble compared to the Canon. So, low light, Canon wins out looking through the viewfinder. But uh, when you are talking about using the LCD screen, live focus versus live focus on the Canon, there's really no comparison. The Sony is the clear winner. Canon often struggles to get focus. This, you know, first generation of this hybrid sensor just quite isn't, isn't quite there yet. Um, even in good light, it can struggle to get focus unless you really pick a high contrast area. Another benefit of the digital viewfinder is you see exactly what your photo is going to look like before you press the shutter. And because it's digital, there's a lot of information that they overlay on the screen there. And you have some control over that with the display button of what exactly. So you can clear it out or you can have grids and... Um, level indicators and all kinds of different things like that and you don't get that on optical. This is all good until the light begins to drop and so now we're talking about where the Sony starts to show some serious weakness. When the light begins to drop 
this little viewfinder here um, really struggles and it becomes really noisy and it's quite you might run into an issue where you really just can't see anything at all because this is optical on this side as long as your eyeball has enough light to see you can still see and compose your pictures doesn't necessarily mean that the Canon is going to take a better picture but at least you can see what you're doing and compose the pictures another thing that I found a little bit annoying about this viewfinder is directly after you take a picture uh, it reviews the image um, and I'm used to reviewing the image here if I want to. So with a Canon, I can look through here, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot, and then review the most recent one or the last couple here. On here, if you have review image turned on, then you are shown right in the viewfinder um, or the LCD. If you turn it off, it turns them off for both of us. So until you have pressed the shutter button again. And there were a couple other little things like this that I ran into that, that lessened my enjoyment of using this camera. Startup time is a little bit slow. Writing to the SD card, even a really fast SD card is slow, so that's the factor of the Canon. Switching um, camera modes, there's just a little bit of lag. Uh, there are times where you're looking through the viewfinder, you pull it away, it switches to the LCD screen, and you put it up against your leg, it switches to the viewfinder. So there's a little sensor here that's not always the smartest. And so there are these little things um, that started to bother me. Those are those are pretty minor. Some bigger ones is um, the amount of times the camera would say no when I tried to set something. Um, you know, in manual mode, there are certain features that are not allowed, and it just tells you that on the back of the screen in big. I don't feel like I run into those issues, and maybe it's some of my familiarity with the Canon, but there are times where this this camera likes to hold your hand a lot, and I feel like if you try to walk across the street um, without looking both ways, it yells at you instead of trying to be helpful, whereas the Canon is a good bit more helpful. Walking around with both of these cameras on auto, um, you know, again, really easy to shoot with, but it made some really interesting white balance choices. Um, pictures were much, much warmer than true to life. Canon was um, much more true to life in its pictures and um, I like them. You can, of course, set white balance in camera, and of course you can fix that in post, but it, it was an interesting difference. Um, there's no way that I know to set, on the video side, there's no way that I know um, to have it on autofocus, but manually expose your video. If you want autofocus on, you have to let the camera set your video exposure. Why focus and exposure are linked in Sony's brain, I don't know. I thought that was really curious. Can't find anything about it. Another minor point, but one that I think would bug me at some point, is the hinge location. On the Sony, the hinge for the LCD screen is on the bottom. And if you had a tripod on here, you're going to run into issues. Uh, especially if you wanted to do some kind of family pictures where you could see if everybody was in the shot and composing it while you're all over there. On the Canon side, you don't run into that. You have the, It can swing out to the side. And so, I don't know if you noticed what I just did there, but I was talking about the fun features of this can camera, shooting with it, and then I got sidetracked by all of these kind of little things. And that's exactly how I felt like when I shoot with a camera. Really want to like it, really like some of the features, but I get sidetracked by kind of these little no's here or the fact that they've made some choices and things of that sort. But, let's finish this on a positive note. Overall, you can get some really nice images out of here. Um, the sensor is excellent. There are a fair amount of lenses, and of course you can put on older lenses from Minolta and um, some of the Pentax. You can throw those on as well. The lenses that Sony makes are a good bit cheaper because none of them have to have the IS in them as well. And uh, that will uh, save you a few dollars down the road. But they also don't have quite the high-end lens selection that you get on the Nikon or Canon side of things, so that's um, that's a downside. The map nerd in me loves the GPS feature and the fact that as soon as I bring these images into Lightroom and I move to the map module, they're all tagged already and there are my pictures on the map uh, with nice little pinpoints. The panorama stitcher works great, the panorama feature or mode, I'm gonna call it. You can do horizontal, left or right, you can do vertical, um, and it works really well. You have super wide and then you have just kind of 
wide panoramas as well. And of course, it bears worth repeating again, the continuous autofocus during video is far and away much better than what you get on Nikon or Canon. So how I'd like to summarize my thoughts here. If you want a point and shoot light camera with 95% of the power of a DSLR, the A65 is a great choice. However, I don't believe it's a great choice if you think this is a stepping stone on the way to serious photographic endeavors. All right. So currently, there's really little room for upward movement within the Sony line, and it's a bit of an unknown where Sony's going to go next. They haven't made a very high-end camera in quite some time. They seem to be very happy making these, and they're nice cameras, as I said, but this kind of prosumer level, we just don't know what Sony's going to be offering in the coming years, and um, you don't run into that on the Canon and Nikon side. You know that there are going to be multiple camera bodies coming out every uh, year to 18 months to 24 months on some of the higher-end models, um, and those are going to be choices for you. Also, with the market share being as small as it is, you have fewer choices for things like remotes, uh, flashes, general accessories. This is not in any way a deal breaker, but it might feel limiting to some. Another major hesitancy of giving this camera a stamp of approval is the electronic viewfinder and how it performs in low light. Maybe you get a camera and decide that you really want to get into astrophotography. You want to do some really nice star trail pictures or some light paintings and things of that sort. This camera is not going to be for you because of that electronic viewfinder. But overall, certainly a camera worth uh, thinking about. And if you have any questions that weren't that wasn't covered in this review, please let me know. Leave a comment or send me an email. My email is down there. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. I've got some more reviews and some um, how-tos that are coming soon. And very soon, I will be giving away an 8GB, the 8GB Pro iFi card. Love that little card. The only way to find out when I'll be giving that away and how to be entered to win is to like my Facebook page. That link is right down there below as well. So thank you.